hasn't started yet. Okay, looks like the recording has started now. Okay. Welcome everybody to the AIU second online conference. And uh, the conference today, December 18th, 2020, the theme will be education in the 21st century. And we're about to start our first presenter. I will be hosting the conference today. My name is Dr. Edward Lambert. And we have a full day of presentations ready. Our first presenter will be Christine George, who's a doctorate student at AIU. And we'll be, uh, the topic will be girl child education in the Western area rural of Sierra Leone. Now remember, you can ask questions in the chat box. Just write your questions down in the chat box and the presenter will be looking at your questions. And if the presenter does not see your question, I will remind the presenter that you have a question. So feel free to ask questions during the presentation. Presentations will be about 30 minutes, 20, 30 minutes, sometimes more. We'll have time after the presentation for, for asking questions. So with that quick introduction, I want to give it over right now to Crispine George, doctorate student at AIU, where every student is unique and unrepeatable. Okay, Crispine George, it's all yours. Thank you very much, Doc. Um, hello, everyone. Um, Crispin George is my name, um, and I am presenting on the topic Girl Child Education in the Western Area Rural of Sierra Leone. Um, Sierra Leone is among um, the poorest countries in the world. Its government largely depends on donor funds to provide social, basic social amenities for its citizens. However, the government has made several strides in the area of education, infrastructure development, energy production, energy production clean drinking water, and good governance. Although massive gaps still exist in the Armenian areas, the country is divided in five regions. North, Northwest, South, East, and West. The Western region is further divided into the Western area urban and the Western area rural. Of course, the Western area rural is the focus of this presentation. The Western area rural has four administrative wards. As you can see from, from the slides, Christine George. these wards are can you check? You have the your mountain internet. rural. Can you check you your the Waterloo uh, rural? Can you check your internet connection? The sound the sound is coming in. It's breaking up. Oh. Is it okay now? Did you Hello? did you change did you change something? No, you will have, I to, speak. Not. You will, you, you will have to speak slower. Are you getting me? You will have to speak slower. Okay. 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 Yeah. So as I was saying, the Western area rural has four administrative wards, which are the mountain rural, Waterloo rural, York Rural and the Koya Rural. But the Waterloo Rural serves as the district capital for the Western Area Rural. Most of the people living within this district um large pains on agricultural activities 
which includes food crops, fisheries, livestock, and forestry. Constitutionally, education is a right to every citizen in Sierra Leone. Unfortunately, the education system had been wrong several challenges including such change of teachers insufficient educational infrastructure I cost of living Increased unemployment rates, civil war, the eleven year civil war, the Ebola. Of Virus natural disasters, including. The recent most light and flooding across the country. As such, educating the girl child needs urgent attention from government and development partners in Sierra Leone, especially looks as so though Christine George was disconnected. Okay, everybody. It looks like we had a uh, technical difficulty here. Let me see if Christine George is still connected here to the conference. No, the computer is connected. Check again. This will happen. This will happen. This is education in the 21st century when you're trying to use internet. It's not a perfect system. The internet is not perfect. And uh, we're gonna have to do the best we can with the technology that we have. And this is one of the obstacles. Is for 
this is one of the obstacles for education in the 21st century is really trying to get good internet connections around the world. Um, needs to working on its infrastructure because it's really, 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 really important to have good internet around the world so that everybody has a good connection, but it costs money. And then you, people need to pay money to get those. So it's, it's, it's a process to bring up that the infrastructure of the internet around the world. It's a process to develop good quality around the world. Um, checking here. Hopefully, when we checked Crispy George's internet connection a few days ago, everything was perfect, clear, strong. Now, I don't know. I don't know if having so many people at the conference now is affecting if, if so many people at the conference right now is affecting the broadcast of the conference here i'll go through i'll go through the presentation here so you can read what we're gonna see if if uh, we'll see if each presenter has has a problem with this. But I'll, I'm going to go through the presentation right now, so that you can at least read it. And I'm checking to see if Crispy George is back online. I think everybody here, he's back online. Let me get him back. Okay, Crispin George, you're back on. Hopefully you have a better connection now. Are you are you getting me now? Oh. Yeah, go ahead. You sound good now. Okay. So um poverty. The additional and cultural practices regarding the education of girl child, lack of educational facilities in communities and religious beliefs and Practices are all pertinent factors affecting girl child education in the districts. An educated female contribute to our area society. And income to support its family. Marriage at a later age
that usually prevents a from what we call teenage pregnancy and even promote educational values in the Oman community, thus uplifting the home community and the nation from the rip of poverty. These community people, they have the people what we call the In addition, the population from the same they need to speak to them. Hello, everybody. We are having technical difficulties. We are having technical difficulties. Christine George is disconnecting, it looks like. Yeah. This is something that the world needs to work on here. Getting better internet connections. I would imagine everybody here is familiar with problems. Yeah, do not create WhatsApp groups with on the online here. That's going to really slow down the connection. So everybody read the chat because Felipe Gomez is is uh, writing messages. Yeah, the uh, – 
Yeah, we're going to be opening a forum later this week for the conferences. So having technical difficulties on the internet is nothing new. This is a problem that this is a problem that happens around the world. So we're trying our best to work through this. Before before the conference, we tested each presenter to make sure they had a good connection. And uh, we worked out some of the problems with Christine George's connection. But there looks like there's no problem popping up here that we were not aware of. Okay, Chris Beecher is back. Crispin George, um, I suggest that you type in chat because the, your sound is not coming through clearly. So go through your slides and uh, write in chat any information that you have. I think this is the only way that we can get through the, the presentation now. Okay. Yes, because something happened with the internet connection. It's just not good. Just being George, turn your camera off. Turn your camera off, but leave your microphone on. Let's see if that helps the situation. Now turn your microphone on. So everybody read the chat. Crispine George is writing in the chat. Hypothesis one focuses on how government and other developmental partners interventions affect girl child education. So it's the government and other developmental partners. They could be like um, NGOs, for example. Hypothesis two looks at community perception in the fight against girl child education. The null and alternative hypotheses are stated. 
So this was the research that Crispine George is doing. How does the perception of the community aid or fight against educating young girls in the rural areas? And it's obviously it's important that men and women are educated so that um, so that the family and the children can be educated too. This was one of the things, uh, there's a part of Africa where there's a saying about how the mother teaches the children. And so to have women who are educated, the, the children will be educated. So now Crispin Church says the null hypothesis in hypothesis one states that there is no significant effect. So that would be the null hypothesis in, in research. You, you, you make a hypothesis about the government and other developmental partners if they have a significant effect. The null hypothesis is that there isn't. And then through research, if you can show that there actually is a, an effect, you've proven your, your alternative hypothesis that there is an effect. The, the statistics wants to show that there is an effect that the uh, government and other developmental partners are having on education for your, for young girls. And so that would be the, that's the hypothesis. And then the null hypothesis is that there is no effect. The, alter, the alternative hypothesis is that there is an effect. We go through this in the research statistics webinars. Yes. And then there's hypothesis two where there's a community perception does not aid in the fight against girl education. So that the community perception does not, not significant, is not, does not impact the changes that need to be made to educate young girls. And then the alternative hypothesis is yes, the community perception does help in fighting um, or, or fighting for the education of young girls. So this is the, this is the hypothesis that Crispine George is going to test in his research. Does the government, um, the, do the government interventions have a significant effect to educate young girls? Hypothesis two, what about the community perception? Is that aiding? this fight to educate young girls. And so through his research, through collecting data, by interviewing people, by, by detecting different changes in policy and what happens in education, he's able to determine if these things really have an effect. Estina Taylor, as a woman in Sierra Leone community perception, it's the biggest fight now because so many people believe that, that women are educated, they will be too powerful. It's completely understood. If women are educated, they're going to be powerful. They're going to have jobs and everything. However, everybody needs to be educated because everybody needs to understand each other. And, every, and we need to educate the next generation. So yes, it is important that men and women are educated because every because the parents, mothers and fathers both educate their children. And we all know that many times the father is working and the father is spending a lot of time at work, 10, 12 hours a day at work. And then the mother is at home with the children, helping them with their homework. So if the mother has to be the teacher at that point in time, the mother has to be educated. She'll have to understand mathematics, writing, vocabulary, languages. She'll have to, she'll have to be educated too. In order to move forward in this 21st century of education, men and women 
need to be educated. So Okafor, Crispin George says, Okafor 2010 states that education is a systematic training process that enables one to learn skills, acquire knowledge, and understand themselves and the environment. Through education, individuals learn and follow proper health guidelines, values, and practices that promote healthy living, as well as strengthen their economic contribution to society. This is another part of educating women, is that they, women are able to do, women are able to have businesses. They can create, they can make products and they can sell. And that increases business in a country, that increases the economy. And that's really the goal of any, of any country is to increase its economy and, and have more resources and more money for the people to develop their lives, their infrastructure, their houses, their, their resources. So the more money you can move between more people in an economy increases the ability of that economy to, to invest more in itself. So for women to be working and men to be working that increases the ability of the economy to move money. And then as that money is moving between people, invest in the culture, invest in infrastructure, invest in schools and training, public services, education. Oprah 2009 refers to girl child education as a form of education that equips young girls, girl child, with the requisite skills capacity and knowledge to overcome and cope with the trials of life. It's an empirical framework. Estina says, I work for BBC Media Action. and We are producing radio programs to educate the, the society that if women are educated and empowered, it will be a major step in shaping the kind of society we want. Most men we interview in our programs say that when women are educated, they won't take they won't take control and will be fearless, which will not be good, a good thing for them. I, I guess what you're saying, Estina, is that women, the men think that the women will take control. Um, here in the United States, after the economic crisis of 2008-2009, People lost a lot of jobs. And then people started to, to, to work again, slowly. Women were put back to work first, mostly, more than men, here in the United States. Jobs opened up for women first. And then the jobs opened up for men as time went on. That created some flexibility in the economy to respond to the recession because women were available to work certain jobs quickly because of their education, because of the type of jobs that were opening up after a recession. So it was very, very important in the United States for women to be educated because they helped the economy recover. And an economy needs that type of flexibility it's was very important to educate women to give the economy flexibility that everybody is working and moving forward, but then when jobs become available, sometimes it's the woman that gets that job and that helps the family. And people, families simply need to be flexible in order to survive. Um, Crispin George says, he concluded that female child education eliminates poverty, yes, backwardness and diseases in the country, and enhances personal and national development. And so when you have flexibility in an economy, when the women are educated, the economy is able to adapt faster. And when you look through evolution of different species, how did species 
evolve and how did they survive? Biology is now telling us that the best way to survive is to adapt. If a species is able to adapt, it will survive. If a species is not able to adapt, if it doesn't have the flexibility to adapt to different changes in its environment, it will not survive. And then when it survives, it needs to maintain its position in the ecosystem to get its resources. But the key point is when challenges come, species need to adapt to survive. It's the same thing for an economy. It's the same thing for a society. You need to have everybody prepared. You need to have men and women educated because it may be the women that can adapt faster than men to a certain situation. Other situations, the men can adapt faster, but everybody needs to be capable to adapt to survive. A family needs to adapt. So the man and the woman, mother and the father, they both need to be educated, and that way the family can adapt faster to survive. This is a key understanding. Um, so Christina says, that's why it is important that we do more behavioral change communications through the media and community engagement to help people understand that education, educating more women and girls means creating a better and equal society. Because none of us are equal until all of us are equal. And it's not that women are powerful. That's a good thing that women are powerful and educated because that helps the economy adapt. That helps families adapt to, to economic crises. Um, a classical Greek Athenian philosopher, Sucrat, Sucida, says that education is the name of helping individuals. I was thinking so that, so what is the state what is the state role here for helping individuals and for obligation to protect girls from discrimination and violence? George Kaleb, is there a national education plan for girl child in Sierra Leone? Okay, Christine George, now you need to respond to some of these questions. Is there a national education plan in Sierra Leone? Sayeda says, I think poverty is the main reason for lack of education, especially in girls. Further, what do you think should be best solutions for the awareness of parents? So, Crispin George, is there a, a government plan to educate girls? And what do you think should be the best solution to bring awareness to parents? Remember, women are making a big percentage in African society and teaching women is empowering families. If more women are educated, Joan will move from being one of the poorest to not being one of the poorest. It's very important to educate women because the world is complicated. The economies are moving fast. Money is moving fast. There's inequality of wealth. It's hard to survive. And so every family needs to have the ability to do that. And in the United States, there are many, 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 many families where the woman works and the man does not. And the man takes care of the home. That's being able to adapt in order to in order to in order that the family survives. And so I understand the thinking also that women have a place to stay in the home and the man should be educated to work in society. That, that, that is the limitation on adaptation to survive as a species, as a family, trying to survive in this complicated world with many challenges. That's the limitation. That if only the man is educated, then it's like you're putting all of the responsibility to adapt for survival on the man. The world is too complicated now. We got the, the world is trying to get beyond that in the 21st century. 
In Ghana, there is a huge paradigm shift to educating girls. Women must manage things better when they are educated, yes. Women need to be educated about health, um, water quality, uh, proper ways of disposing of water, proper ways of doing business. How do you invest? How do you how do you how do you get savings? How do you pay your bills? What's the bank account? How to work with the bank? What's accounting? Uh, many many things will make the country stronger through education because everybody has to work. Also, the inequality in placement between the male child and female child pose more problem in educating. There are problems. There are obstacles. And read Crispin George's. Uh, responses here. Government has a broad education plan called, okay, so here, Crispin George, the government has a broad education plan called free quality education. This plan caters for both male and female. We're still challenged in the area of addressing girls' health education nationally, probably more in the rural areas. As, as ten cultures in the rural areas tend to be more male um, dominated. Where it's the man is seen as the as the person in the family who needs to provide for the family. Let's see. Um, even though female student at tertiary level are given scholarships, especially when they are opting for science related, so they um, women are receiving scholarships. Now in South Sudan, the Minister of Education is working hard to promote girl education with some international NGOs. That's very good. Many of our students at AIU are working with NGOs around the world. We have a we have a a class, we have a webinar on non-governmental organizations to give you an introduction to what those are. And then you can actually find good work with those those non-governmental organizations. In Ghana, here I come from Ghana, it's believed that when you educate a man, you educate an individual. But when you educate a woman, you educate a nation. That's the saying I was trying to remember. When you educate a woman, you educate the family. And when you educate the family, you educate the community. And once you educate the community, you educate the nation. And it starts with the man and the woman both being educated. As, as, a, as parents to children, that when the man and the woman are educated, the children become more educated. And then as the children become more educated, the community becomes more educated. And then as the community becomes more educated, the nation becomes more communicated, uh, educated. But it starts with the father and the mother both being educated. And that's, that's a saying. I think not only in Ghana, but in other parts of Africa, that when you educate a woman, you end up educating the nation. But it also says men and women both need to be educated. This is an important thing in being able to respond to experience. Like I said at the beginning of this introduction of the conference, Every, every student at the IU is unique and unrepeatable. Every student is unique and unrepeatable in the sense that we all share experience, but our knowledge and our understanding is what helps us respond better to the challenges and experience in our lives. So if the father and the mother are both educated, that makes them both, as a family, more powerful to respond to the challenges of the world and helps their children develop their abilities to respond to the challenges of the world. What are the specific cultural taboos in the Western rural area against the education of the girl child? So, Christine, there are serious problems with implementation and monitoring. They brought up motivational money paid to the girls. I agree with you, Ethan. Monitoring, Crispin George says, I agree with you, Ethan. 
Monitoring is a serious challenge in Sierra Leone, and that is one of my recommendations in this research. So monitoring. If Crispin George, if you could write a little more about what monitoring is and how that is done, that would help. And another question, what about the teaching practices and harassment of girls in schools? Another issue. So this research, Crispin George says, this research employs both purposive and simple random techniques. Uh, let's see another comment. That course, me to do my research, right abuse, non-secured community. In Zambia, women and girls are getting equal opportunities for education. We are seeing more women getting educated and holding high positions in offices. It's important because women need to be represented. So women need to have, women need to have positions of power because they're concentrating on certain aspects of the society that are important to develop. So in Nambia, they are working on that. Crispin George is purpose, purposive because the researcher wants to select participants who will provide appropriate data. That's important. Uh, first, let us consider the level of our education in Africa. I think this point us to the quick solution on this matter. Ebenezer, I suggest in some communities, there should be strict policies and strategies from the central government for enforcement. Otherwise, some religious sects will fight back. True. Anastasia is also being done. Women should stay at home teaching children how to cook and to do some of the house chores. But in Ghana, we have a free and compulsory education, so it's very important for every parent to educate their children. In our region, there is no equal opportunity. That's from Muhammad. What about the human rights violation towards the education privilege? Quality education is a human right for every human, men and women. Estina responds to Mukuru. It is another serious challenge in Sierra Leone. We had cases of teachers harassing and even impregnating girls, causing them to drop out of school. Girls are terrified in universities because lecturers are asking for sex for grades. Another big problem that needs to be that needs to be dealt with. This that that's a serious deep problem, and that would be a whole other presentation in the conference on women's issues. All the women, all the issues that women have to deal with. And that these are limitations holding back societies to, to respond and adapt to the world. Okay, Chris Bean George says monitoring has to do with close supervision of the educational policies and strategies implemented by government to ensure that the desired objectives are met. And Manuel. In my point of view, all African countries are linked in their forms of non-formal and formal education. Children go to school with a message of joy, of sickness, and even of hunger. The teachers sometimes need to read the instructional objectives. There is no time to read, to analyze the messages brought by children, both male and female. Crispin George is the reality in Sierra Leone on this issue. So Crispin George is bringing out the reality, and it is a reality. This is a very important issue of the 21st century. Um, in northern Nigeria, less attention is given to girl-child education. The girls are rather given out as early as 14 years into the marriage without education. Yeah, these are these are issues. This is development. This is time. This is society. This is sociology. This is under and develop one's society. And education is very important. Um, I'm going to run through the slides for the presentation. But we need to end this. We're going to end this presentation now. I'm very sorry for the technical difficulty for the presentation. You can continue the conversation in chat. You can continue this conversation writing your comments, Christine George. I suggest that you continue 
to respond to the comments in chat. Most female students are afraid to bring up these complaints for fear of victimization. Common story around the world. Women are afraid to complain. Women are afraid to complain. And complaining has different levels, whether something, a, a crime was committed or just that the limitations are unfair. Women are afraid to complain. Women recognize a problem. They recognize they want, they love their families. Women love their husbands. Women love their children. They love their communities. They want to help. They want to serve. They want to help. They want to work. They want to be productive because they see problems too. And they feel limited. And they don't want to feel limited. They see how they can help. So it's important to understand each other, men and women, to, to recognize the value and the power in women and release and cultivate that power. That makes society stronger. And women around the world are afraid to complain that there is a problem. That's a problem in itself. It's a, it's a common issue from India to China to United States to Latin America. Women need the power, just like workers need the, need, need the power to come together and ask for higher wages. Workers need power to ask for higher wages. They need that power to express their voice. Women also have their voice. They need some power in society, some respect to be incorporated because they need to survive. Families need to survive. A country needs to survive. So these are deep issues that will continue to be developed through time. These are deep issues that will continue to be developed around the world. But this next generation growing up will make changes. They don't, they don't think exactly the same way. They're getting more education. They're getting more power. So it's, it's a process to, to, from generation to generation to release the power of society, to take those limitations and get rid of them. So I want to thank Crispin George for this presentation. I am very sorry we had technical difficulties, but at least we got at least we got the the topic out there. We're discussing it. People are giving their comments. Crispine George is still responding to comments in chat. So this has been a presentation by Crispine George, a doctoral student at AIU studying Girl Child Education in the Rural Areas of Sierra Leone. And if you need more information on this, you can write and you can, we can get you in contact with Crispine George so that, you can, so that you can learn more about his research. Just contact your tutor or you can contact me, Dr. Edward Lamb at the university and I can, I can, find, I can connect you with Crispine George so that you can work together on ideas. Um, so this presentation is done. The next presentation will start in about five minutes. Thank you, Crispy and George. And I can see the conversation is still happening in chat between Crispy and George and other participants in the conference. Okay, thank you very much. I will be ending this presentation.